All right, thank you for participating today. We are joined by Miles McBride and we'll begin the press conference. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and your affiliation first, just because they can't see you. So we're going to start, Greg Hunter, you have the first question. So Deuce, first of all, Greg Hunter with the Blue and Gold News, have you ever had a six point possession? And I mean, that, that was a key, key moment uh, with buckets and foul shots and all that. You guys were up four at that point, and all of a sudden you never were really challenged after that. Uh, no, I don't think I've ever done anything like that, but you know, just in the moment, playing the game, you know, trying to stay one step ahead of the defense and the other team. All right, our next question comes from Kevin Kinder. Kevin Kinder from the Blue and Gold News. Deuce looked like the game plan was really to try to get up in the lanes, pressure them a lot. Uh, you know, they had suffered some turnovers. How well do you think you executed that throughout the game? Was that the biggest difference for you? Yeah, uh, definitely wanted to make them feel uncomfortable and try to jump out, which we did. But, you know, then, you know, we let we let it slip away and kind of, you know, let them back into the game. And, you know, when they're a good team, give a lot of credit to them. When they got got a rhythm going, they're, they're hard to stop. But, you know, it's just about us, you know, applying more pressure and, again, getting up in those lanes and, and making everything hard for them. Our next question comes from Justin Jackson. Hey, Deuce, uh, Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post here at Morgantown. Um, just kind of wondering, um, you, Derek had a, a frustrating uh, first half, but he obviously came alive in the second half. Um, how much does that help, you know, what you guys are doing out on the perimeter when he's doing what he's doing on the inside? Yeah, it obviously helps a ton when you have a guy like Derek that's able to, one, create his own shot, but and two, go rebound, a missed shot, you know, it really makes the defense suck in, which makes our uh, our job a lot easier. So give a lot of credit to Derek and him doing his job, you know. He, he had a rough first half, but obviously, you know, we're going to keep, you know, staying positive and he's going to keep at it. Next, we'll be having Adam Rittenberg. So Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. Miles, uh, Coach Huggins got his 900th career win. What does it mean for you to be part of that? And where, where, where do you think that that falls in the, uh, the history of the sport of college basketball? Uh, it, it, it means definitely a lot. You know, him being, you know, really the the only, the first and only, you know, major coach, major D1 school to offer me, you know, thinking back to that at that time, he, he really showed a lot of loyalty and a lot of trust that I was going to come back, you know, and, and be a great player. And, you know, being able to be here for him to get that nine or win, it, it means a lot. So I'm really happy we got it done today. All right, Cody Nespor. Cody Nespor, uh, West Virginia Sports Now. Deuce, just, you know, after everything that happened last year and everything you've done this year, just what, what has tonight meant for you, you know, scoring 30 points in your first ever March Madness game? Uh, you know, it's great to, you know, put numbers up on the board, but at the end of the day, I'm just about winning, you know, getting a W in the column. And, you know, next game, it's about being 1-0 and again. So it's great that I did great. Again, my teammates give a lot of credit to them for stepping up, and a, a lot of guys played well tonight. So anytime we can get in the W column, it, it's a big-time night. All right, our next question comes from Ethan Bach. Ethan Bach with uh, Blue Gold Sports. Deuce, you guys were you guys had to wait a good 30 minutes after the Purdue North Texas game going to overtime. Were you guys anxious at all waiting for that end of the game? Because I remember you bringing up how it's like an AAU tournament. So I just want to get your thought on that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, honestly, just you know, being around March Madness games, you know, for the first time, this was the really the first March Madness game, you know, obviously I've been to and just being able to be on the other side watching that game, you know, you really feel the energy. Guys get a little jittery and come out a lot more energy. So, you know, it was just a great atmosphere to be in. I'm glad that, you know, our fans showed up and showed out tonight. Our next question comes from Michael. Uh, yeah, this is Mike Casazza from 24-7 Sports. Um, Deuce, long day today. You said you were going to watch basketball. It was pretty eventful. Um, just watching games, did that prepare you or your team for all the stuff that you encountered during the game today? 
Yeah, definitely. You know, it would have been nice to have a you know earlier start, but you know, watching all those games today, it's always fun. You know, we're still I'm still a basketball fan. My teammates are obviously, so just watching those games too, and you know, learning what what to do and what not to do. You know, it's always fun to watch those, but you know, just waiting around for our game, you get you start to feel the energy again, feel anxious that you know it's it's March and it's what every kid dreams about and being in this moment at this time. Our next question comes from Gregory Carey. Greg Carey, West Virginia Metro News. Deuce, uh, obviously you weren't around here when West Virginia was in the Big East, but what does a second round matchup with Syracuse mean to you? And obviously you know what kind of defense you guys are going to be up against. Yeah, obviously everybody knows about their 2-3 zone. Uh, obviously they have a great team. To you know, They beat a good San Diego State team. So we're going to have to you know think about you know, think about this win tonight, get over it, and tomorrow start prepping for them. All right, and our next question comes from Justin Jackson. Hey, Deuce, so I wanted to ask about uh, Jalen. You know, obviously he's a freshman, and, and all of a sudden, I mean, this was your first time in the NCAA game, but I mean, you know, he's a freshman kind of stepping into this. What what did he give you tonight? And, you know, was it surprising at all that, uh, you know, he's a first year guy kind of, you know, enjoying the moment uh, that he had? Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's it's been really great to be able to grow with with Jalen, see his growth and maturity throughout, you know, his uh, two years here. Obviously, I've seen a lot of things he can do in practice, so I just try to stay encouraging him and reminding him, you know, to bring more confidence and, you know, be more of an attacker because obviously we saw tonight when, when he's attacking and he's confident, he can be really hard to uh, stop. All right, uh, I will remind you to please use the raise hand function if you have any other questions. In the meantime, um, could you talk to us about what it just means to you this year to be able to play after a whole year of sports being gone and not being able to compete at all? Yeah, honestly, being so close to being in the tournament last year for the first time and then having it taken away, I, I think it hurt everybody, you know, so I think it's our duty to you know, play for those guys that didn't get a chance to play last year. You know, the seniors like, you know, Jermaine Haley, uh, Logan Rowell, and Chase Harler, those guys that didn't get a chance to play in, play in it, you know, it, it would obviously mean a lot for us, for them, for us to go far and, and really be successful this tournament. All right, thank you.